Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're working our way through our book, Math Test Success, ASVAB Algebra. Today is Chapter 3, Percentages. Uh, you want, if, you, if you haven't bought the book, make sure you have a notebook out in front of you and a pencil. As we go through, you want to pause the video, take your own notes. I've left spaces on this document to take notes, and then make sure you do the problems before I do them. You can't learn how to juggle by watching me juggle. Just like you can't learn math by watching me do math, you got to practice. So make sure you're doing all the problems. Mastering percentages, chapter three. Um, a percentage is really a vital tool for understanding proportions and changes. It's used every day from calculating discounts and interest rates and it calculating percentages and applying them to discounts and markups. So we're going to start right here at 3-1. Calculating percentages, discounts, and markups. Our percentage is really the same as a fraction or a decimal. It is just out of 100%. So the whole is 100%. 50% is 50 parts of that 100 or one half of the whole. Um, this is a notation for percentages. And the way I like to convert decimals to percent, I think of this thing as an arrow. And it's shooting it over this way to make it a percent. 1, 2, so 0.25 is equal to 25%. Um, calculating a percentage to find a percentage of a number, multiply the number by the percent. So if, for example, we had 25% of 80, now I'm in percent, I'm going back this way, so now I'm shooting the decimal over 1, 2 this way, so 25% is 0.25 of 80, of means to multiply, so I have to multiply that 0.25 and 80 together, 5 times 0, 5 times 8 is 40, placeholder, 0, 16, then I add straight down 0, 0, 10, carry the 1, 2, and then I have my decimal over 1, 2, 1, 2, so 25% of 80 is equal to 20, and that kind of makes sense, right? If my whole is 80, a quarter of it would be 20, or 25%. Discounts. A discount is a reduction in the original price of an item. The discount amount is equal to the original price times the discount percent. So the sales price is going to be the original price minus the discount. Okay, markups, an increase in the original cost of an item. So the markup amount will be the original starting point of the, of the item for uh, getting marked up times the markup percentage. And then the selling price is going to be that original amount plus that additional markup amount. Let's take a look at a few of those. So let's do some practice problems here. Calculate 15% of 120. First thing I do is I move that decimal over 1, 2 to get 0.15. 120 times 0.15 gives me 0, 10, carry the 1, 5, 6, placeholder 0, 2, 1. Add straight down to get 1, 8, 0, 0. So I get 1, 8, 0, 0. And then the decimal is over 1, 2, 1, 2. So 15% of 120 is 18. That kind of makes sense, uh, because I know 10% of 120 would be 12. Well, half of 12 is 6, so that would be 5%. And that 5 and the 10 together give me 15, or the 12 and the 6 give me 18. What's 60% of 250? Again, shooting that decimal over 1, 2.6. I don't have to keep the 0 on there. I could just go 250 times that 0 0.6, 0, 30, carry the 3, 15. Decimal place is over 1 to give me 150. Half of 250 is 125. 60 is more than that, so I'd expect something like that. Number three, the original price is at 45 bucks. It is on sale for 0.2 off. What is the discount amount and the sales price. It's a good question because there are two questions in it. So let's find the discount first. 
I'm going to take that 45, multiply it by 0.2. 45 times 0.2. Maybe I could do 2 times 45 to get 90. Or I could go 10, 8, 9, decimal places over 1 to get 9. That seems about right. So what is the discount amount? That would be $9. What is the sale price? It's going to be the $45 minus the $9 to give me the sale price of $36. Remember, pause the video, do these problems before I do them, and pause and watch how I do them. Store buys a product for $80, marks it up 35%. So I'm going to do that $80 times the decimal equivalent, 0.35. Could have dropped the zero there. I'm going to get 0, 40, placeholder, 0, 24, add across 28, 0, 0. I'm over 1, 2, so I get $28. Think about that for a second if that makes sense. Store buys a product for 80 bucks, marks it up 35%, like a third of that. So 28 bucks sounds good. What is the markup amount? $28. What is the selling price? I'm going up this time, right? So I start here, I go up this. 80 and 28 gives me 108 right there. So two answers on that problem. Okay, number five, what percentage? So I'm saying what percentage of 50 is 15? So I'm looking for a percentage. I'm going to use an X right there. So I'm going to say 50 times what percentage? I don't know what it is. Is X is 15. I have to get X by itself. I divide both sides by 50. That gives me X by itself. That's a pretty hard one. Then I have to do 15 over 50. That's a fraction. I could reduce it. 5 goes into here 3 times, into here 10 times. So X is equal to 3 tenths. I could multiply that by 10 to get 30 one hundredths or 30%. So what percentage of 50 is 15? 15 is 30%. What is 2% of 400? Well, I know 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. Is that going to be the right amount? Let's think about that. 10% of 400 is 40. So 2% should be you know, a fifth of that or 8. Let me do one last one, and you could always go to the book and get more problems if you want. A $60 item has a 10% discount. What is the new price? So first I have to start with 60 bucks. 10% of 60 is $6 off. So my discount amount is six. What is the new price? Six from that 60, the new price is $54. Okay, section 3.2, the next little section in chapter 3, percentage increase and decrease. Understanding how to calculate percent increase and decrease is really important for looking at changes over time. Section covers the formula and applications. A percentage increase is a relative increase in a quantity expressed as a percentage. So a percentage increase is going to be that increase amount over the original amount times 100% to make it a percent. Percent decrease is a decrease amount over the original amount times 100%. Okay, so if we're looking for percent increase or percent decrease, it is the amount over the original amount. So let's do some samples here. Whoops, let's go ahead and do a couple sample problems here. A company's revenue increased from 500,000 to 600,000. How much did it increase? What is the percent increase? So we're going to look at the amount it increased. So it went from 100, and actually I could just drop all these zeros to compute a little faster, over the original amount, 500. So 100 to 600 is 100. 100 over 500, what is the percent increase? So this is going to reduce down to one-fifth. I could convert that to a decimal. 5 times 20 equals 100. So this is equal to 0.2. Then I multiply by 100% to get 20%. 20% 20 
So it is a 20% increase to go from 500,000 to 600,000. Let's do one population decrease. The population of a town decreased from here to here. What's the percentage decrease? So I go from 8,000 to 7,200. The amount of decrease is 800, right? 8,000 minus 7,200 over the original amount, 8,000. Again, I could cancel two zeros. I could cancel an A to go into each one of those, leaving me with one tenth, 0 0.10, or 10 percent. It's a little tricky. It's really based on uh, the wording. But this is the population town decrease from this to this. So the percent decrease will be the decrease amount always over the original amount. Actually, let's do one more. I have an increase from 20 to 25. What's the percent increase? Well, it went up five bucks over the original amount of 20 bucks. Five goes into there one times into there four times. Give me a quarter. Got a quarter in my pocket. I know that's 25 cents, 0.25 or 25 percent. Okay, moving on to section 3.3, solving percentage-based word problems. The hard part about these is you gotta know the math and then also be able to decode the English. Um, couple strategies, really read carefully, identify that key information, translate into equations or pictures if you can, solve the equations, and then always stop and look at it and check your answer, see if it makes sense first, like if you're in the ballpark, and then see if you can plug it back in to verify it. So let's go ahead and do a couple of these right here. A store offers a 25% discount. So 0.25, that's an important thing. On all items, the customer buys a jacket at the original price at 80 bucks, how much do they save? So I take that $80 times that decimal, that's how much the discount's gonna be. I didn't write it out as a long multiplication because I know 0.25 a quarter, quarter in my pocket, right, 25 cents. And I could take that and split it into four equal parts or into quarters. Half is 40, half of that is 20. So my discount is 20 bucks. And then I got to be really careful in my wording here. How much will they save? Well, they only want to know the discount here. So the correct answer is they will save 20 bucks. It's as much a word problem as it is a math problem. Company sales increased by 0.15 from last year. If the last year's sales were 1.2 million, what are they this year's sales? So I'm actually not going to use all those zeros in my multiplication. I'll add them on afterwards. I'm going to take 12 times 0.15, 10, carry the 1, 5, 6, placeholder, 2, 1. That gives me 0, 8, 1, I'm over 1, 2, so I'm over 1, 2, right there. Now I got to add on there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. So that means I got to go from here in the other direction five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the company sales increased by 15%. Last year they were 1.2 million. They went up. By 180,000, seems like a lot, but we're talking about 1.2 million. So the increase was 180,000. What is their new amount of sales? I add the increase to the original amount, and I get 1,380, 1, 2, 3. So 1,380,000. All right, let me do one more practice problem. Again, there's a lot more practice problems here. If you have the book, you can work your way through and I'll have answers in the back. Uh, a recipe calls for 30% sugar, that's 0.30. If the total weight of the ingredients is 500 grams, how much sugar is needed? That's gonna be that 500 times that 0.3. It's gonna multiply those two together. To give me 15, decimal place is one. I didn't do that 500. I did the five, so I got two extra zeros here. 
I get to add those zeros on by going over one, two, give me 150. So 150 is my answer here. Let me reread that and see if that makes sense. Recipe calls for 30% sugar by weight. If the total weight is 500, then I have 150 grams of sugar. Right? And that kind of makes sense. It's about a third. So a third of that is 150 grams. All right. Thank you for watching Chapter 3. Any questions at all, please post them in the comments. This chapter went a little bit faster. I think the first couple of chapters were a little too long. So I think I'm going to try and slow it down a little bit and not cover quite as much. Um, I really appreciate you watching. If you know anybody who might be interested in this, please feel free to forward them the link to the whole course. I'm building the course right now. The only way you get good in math is practice. So make sure you're practicing these problems as you're doing them. Thank you.